Hello, welcome to a new video. Today I want to show you how much I struggle at even doing the simplest things. <laughs> you may have noticed that ever since my video about voxel models, there have been these annoying moiré patterns in the game. And yeah, I think it's finally time to do something about that. As you can see, it, they are really annoying and they flicker around and, well, hopefully you can see it, <laughs> but it's really annoying for me at least. And this is a fairly common problem. Obviously, as soon as you have a plane with a texture, then you will get these patterns. And every game has to deal with it, so there has been a standard solution for this, basically. It's called map mapping and it's fairly easy to do. Let me show you how easy it is in OpenGL. Essentially, after generating the texture, you need to call this gl generate map map command. And afterwards, you just need to add one thing to your configuration to tell it how to interpolate the map map levels, and that's super easy. So, let's see how that looks. Ah, much better. So let's get back down to the surface and see how it works with the voxel models. Hmm, that doesn't look quite right. There's a bunch of lines, like yellow lines where there shouldn't be any lines. And <laughs> Essentially the problem is, here I'm using two different textures for the top face. And at the places where it switches textures, it doesn't know what to do, so it just chooses the highest mid map level, and that's why I get real lines there. A similar problem here at the fences. You can kind of see at every corner there is like one of these weird lines, and that's essentially the same thing, except here I'm using a different texture coordinate, basically, and there's a a jump in the texture coordinate and when the texture coordinate jumps the mid mapping thinks uh, we are far away and so it uses a higher mid map level and we get lines again. So that's really annoying and to solve this I took a look under the hood of mid mapping and Essentially, it seems to be boiling down to this fwidth function. This fwidth function is quite cool. Essentially, it looks at the neighboring pixels and then it computes how much a given value changes uh, compared to the neighboring pixels. And yeah, that's quite useful. If you have a texture coordinate, you can see how much does the texture coordinate change and if it changes by more than one pixel you can use a lower resolution texture. So my own version of map mapping looks like this. Did you see a difference? I did not. <laughs> but as you can see this corner case here is, is gone, there's no more lines. Same here, so it's looking pretty good, right? <laughs> well, if it only was so easy, essentially I just traded one corner case for another and to make this corner case more visible, let's crank up the mid map level <laughs> and now if I get close to these fences, you can kind of see, for example, the the top part of the fences has a different texturing than the central part, and also the the left side of the bounding or if you look at the bounding box of this fence, then if you look at the top through the top texture, there's a different mid map. If you look through the left Part, there's a different mid map and only if you look through the front it's kind of what I would expect and yeah that's not an effect I want to have. 
to make this easier to visualize, I made this fun little debug visualization. Essentially, the brighter something is, the higher the mipmap level. And as you can see, if I look at things from a shallow angle, then they light up. And that's exactly what I want. However, if you look at the fences, there's this small section between the fences that also lights up. And I don't like that. <laughs> and the problem, essentially, you can see this really good at these o'clocks, is that this mip mapping technique doesn't take care about the actual voxel model. It only looks at the bounding boxes or the, the bounding faces. This is a problem for me because I'm not rendering my models as triangles, but instead I'm using this parallax ray marching thing. If you missed the video about that, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Again, another solution that doesn't work. So, after this, I decided to try something different. Right now, this is done entirely in the fragment shader, and I thought maybe it works better if I try to compute this in the vertex shader and then use interpolation magic to figure out the rest. And as you can see, again, there is not a big difference to the other versions. So let's jump right back into the debug view. And as you can see, the weird corner cases are gone here. All the fences light up when I want them. Uh, so yeah, this is essentially how I want it to look. Also here at the hoax locks, you can really clearly see that all the faces are lighting up individually. And <laughs> I finally have the resolution that I want. Now, there's just one tiny problem with this approach. Let's get close to something. And here we go. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Some weird interpolation gone wrong stuff. <laughs> what I think is happening is one of the vertex sees gets drawn behind me so some value is negative and the line is at the point where some values are zero and i'm dividing by these values and so it's a, essentially a division by zero and this gives me these lines and just again the debug view as you can see, it's completely wild. Neon stripes everywhere. <laughs> it's looking super fancy, but it's not something I would like to have. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty big issue. And at this point, I was already like two days in at making this version work so i tried another day to debug this and essentially i didn't find a good solution but the closest thing i got was to just disable interpolation <laughs> and that gets rid of the patterns and also seems to look fairly reasonable and if i go into the world view again it looks like all the other methods. <laughs> yeah, I, you might ask why I even bother with these corner cases, but they they might get more than corner cases in some with some specific models. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. I at this point I was really frustrated, so I decided that's it. Uh, Time to move on, I'm done here. And yeah, 
a week later I came back to this and essentially because I disabled interpolation I get back to weird issues for example here all the faces light up at the same intensity at the same time the the stripe on the left for example shouldn't have this high of a midmap level and you can kind of see that the the thing that was bright in the debug view now has a uniform coloring and that's not good <laughs> i don't want that so yeah another another method scrapped and also you can see sometimes it just doesn't work at all like here <laughs> only a small portion lights up <laughs> So, yeah, at this point I didn't really know what to do, but eventually I went back to the drawing board and tried to figure things out in the fragment shader again. And this is when I got this. I don't want to go into too much detail, it's, all of these things are fairly complicated and annoying. And as you can see, this method finally is working in the way I want to. There's no weird issues when I get close to something. And also what was missing with the other methods, the, the horizon is, is flat now, basically. I don't know if I it makes sense to call that horizon but in the other methods it was for example in this one it had a clear directional dependence and now it's exactly what I w would like to have <laughs> no matter in what direction I look it's always uniformly that's a good sign and here also the fences work And yeah, that only took me two weeks in total. Of course, I wasn't working the whole time on this, but... <laughs> Super annoying that something as simple as like this, which normally doesn't, doesn't take more than like five minutes, is completely broken and takes weeks to figure out. That's kind of a hidden cost that I added when I introduced the voxel models. I thought that there would be some problems like these, but I didn't expect it to be this annoying. <laughs> yeah, anyways, you may have noticed that this only took two weeks, but it has been four weeks since my last video, so let's get back into the game and let me show you what i also did let's get some items here and throw them on the ground ah. as you can see i implemented item drops on the rewrite don't ask me why the lock is not in the right position. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's working quite well. It took me the best of the two weeks, basically. And yeah, it was also a bit hard because I had to work with voxel models again. And also, somehow the blocks appear to be much larger than in the Java version. But I think it's fine, it's, it's looking kind of cool in my opinion. And also if you wonder why everything has this jitter to it that's an artifact from the server, uh, I'll have to fix that once I get to the server side. And as you can see it's kind of in sync between the two versions. 
So yeah, uh, what do you think about these big, big block drops, big item drops? <laughs> Is that something I should keep? <laughs> Yeah, anyways, that's it for this month. I have decided to do uh, less videos because if I do one video every two weeks, it will either I stop working on the rewrite and try to do fun stuff or I work on the rewrite and then I have no content for the video. So that's kind of something I, I want to avoid. <laughs> That dilemma so I've decided to go from one video every two weeks to one video every month maybe we'll see how I can keep up with that <laughs> goodbye